Hey, hey. So this podcast has already been recorded, but this little juicy piece of information has just come up. So I wanted to lead off with this and then we'll get into the official cast in a second. I had mentioned to you guys that I was suspended off of Twitter. I just got documentation, I guess you want to call it that, uh, two days ago that I'm permanently suspended off. Again, this was because I posted what I consider social commentary on the Balenciaga scandal, fiasco, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Again, a gentleman dressed in, you know, leather pants, bare chested, some S&M chains up there. But basically, funnily, it wasn't really funny, trying to get a job at Balenciaga dressed like that, like. He purposely did that because of every all the scandal that's going on. So it was it was a social commentary. It was brave what this guy did. So anyway, Twitter took me off. And at this point, I am not I'm permanently suspended. And apparently they're also supposed to be now a place of free speech, a place of, you know, where everyone can have their ideas so far, it is not looking that way. So I I would like for you guys to protest this. If you are not on Twitter, get an account on Twitter. And if you want to bring me up specifically, I am the at symbol Eden Cause asking why she was suspended or asking the questions. I thought you guys were about free speech, but I'm hearing from other people that they've been suspended. Um, and knowing that Twitter is also trying to get anything sexual off their sites and really, really looking out. However, they did not look at my video in full. Um, and it is it is challenging in a way too, because I put time getting back on there, kind of not trusting it completely, but going, okay, maybe this is a good spot. And funnily, I am still on Facebook. I get my stuff taken down on Facebook, but I haven't been banned on Facebook or Instagram. But yet Twitter, the place that it is supposed to be, safe and supposed to be good. That's where I was not only suspended, but permanently suspended. All right. So army digital soldiers get on there, ask about what's going on. Ask about me specifically. Uh, let's, let's, let's cause a little bit of, um, controversy, a little bit of motion, because again, we cannot be quiet in this. And I, I think I'm going to be emailing Twitter every day, uh, because I, I can't sit back with this either because if that is what they are saying, that they are about free speech and they're about letting people, you know, talk about things from my experience right now, no, they are not. And they either need to come and tell us the truth or they need to be, you know, pointed out. Not only pointed out, but finger, a big finger in their face. All right, let's get on with the episode. Thank you. Eden here pausing for dramatic effect with just be spiritual boom now heading you like a Mack truck into this great awakening or whatever you want to call it. So hold on to your hats as always. It's not so much gentle anymore. It's just, this is the reality and share, share, share as much as possible. And I I want to go ahead and state uh, our just be practice at the end is going to kind of correlate to what we did or what I did last time, which is working on that intuitiveness, like remote um, viewing. So we're going to do that again this time, but differently again, to just increase this intuitive, this uh, creativity that's in all inside of all of us. And what this great awakening is about is getting back in touch with that. So stay tuned. Now, I did have a guest for this week, um, actually recorded it and did everything and just really, so I'm not going to air it. And it really helped me clarify what this podcast is about, which is essentially any, anything I can give you about the great awakening. Like our last two guests have been very hard hitting and kind of in your face. Sometimes we have that. Sometimes we have a, a spiritual person who knows everything that's going on, but they're their business or their spiritual practice is not about encouraging that yet they know what's going on. And I also, part of my path with this is to let the spiritual community know what is really going on. So I was so, um, it, it was challenging, 
not to air, especially when you have a guest and you, you know, encourage them to get on. But there were, there were certain things that I had thought or true, which were not. So it really strengthened this podcast. Um, and I want to tell you who's coming up and I do have notes. Cause I like to, when it's just me, I like to keep myself on track and, you know, keep, well, just that keep myself on track. Which okay. So who's coming up. And sometimes I get, I get floored with who's going to be here because it is, it is, it is excellent. So Brandon Wainwright will be my next guest. He is a former police officer whose little eight pound dog Tyson died. And because of that, there started being this otherworldly communication, if that's when you want to call it, and turned it really spiritually awakened him. So this is going to be so much fun to talk about for those who are animal lovers as well. And, and being a police officer, his life has completely changed now Reiki and doing all this light stuff and energy work. And, uh, he beautifully, when I talk about the great awakening, he knew of parts of it, yet he is going to be investigating a lot of it before he comes and is with us as well. So I, I really enjoy that because part of my deal is to awaken people to this and people who take it seriously and people who want to understand it. And there are parts of this that he understands that most people wouldn't understand anyway. So I know he's, and he, plus he's a friend of another um, person we've had on the show. So I have, I, I'm very excited about him being here. Then after that, Nyla Newing, who has a huge following, she is, I'm going to read this, a light warrior here to assist the planet during this pivotal ascension period. She helps anchor the 5D energy and share her spiritual metaphysical gifts and galactic knowledge again, because this is so huge to people going through their ascension journey. So we will have her on here. I'm not sure what we're going to talk about exactly, because I like to kind of wait and who knows what the world's going to be going through. So I'm sure there's going to be something topical with that. Then scheduled next is Bruce Poppy Feldman. He's big in the Truth Tour, which starts again in January of 2023. He's a 50-year-old husband, father, grandfather, and I love this, red-blooded American patriot who lives outside of Tampa, Florida, who has enlisted himself as a digital soldier fighting for humanity. So I'm so excited to have him on. Ah, delightful. All right, a couple of things I want to say, bigger picture. So Trump has given an acknowledgement to dark days ahead. And there's another gentleman that I listened to that uh, talks about this as well. And this has been in the forefront for a while, that something big is going to happen. Something, something is going to come down the pipe. So I don't know when that's going to be, but I imagine that it is going to be sooner than later because there does need to be some sort of big event that wakes up a huge chunk of humanity. So my gut feeling with that too is, you know, this one gentleman that I like says, oh, something big in 2023 is going to happen, which again, that's a long time. It could be a long time, but I, I think something is going to come sooner than later. So again, just be prepared be calm, whatever it may be, have some food and some money stocked up just in case, you know, things shut off or whatever, and, and do your best not to be scared. Even when Trump talks about it being dark days, I'm not going to let it be dark for me. So you have a choice in how you see it. If you're going to attach to the beauty that is happening and is coming out of it, or if you're going to talk, attach to the darkness and the sadness. And the more you attach to the beauty, the more you can help others do that as well. Because I know that is one of my big things right now is to be a foot soldier through all of this. I mentioned to you guys the, the dark attack that occurred to me, and I'm going to put the date on this, Friday, December 9th, uh, when uh, I had clients that morning, started getting really nauseous. And I don't get sick. That's my mantra as well. I don't get sick. And like something, something was off. And I even went to the bathroom, excuse the, this might be too much information, you know, thought I was going to throw up, did all that stuff, but nothing came out. And then I came back down and laid on the floor and suddenly started hearing all these horrible voices. Like you cannot do this anymore. And I was supposed to be a guest on a podcast at five o'clock that afternoon, which I did. So basically 
just stood up to my truth, to my authenticity and to my choice and basically said, no, this is not going to impede me. These dark forces, none of this is a part of my world. So see you later. And I ended up doing the podcast, was very tired that night, but just put it in my periphery that when I woke up the next morning, I was going to be fine. And I was. Okay. Why I'm telling this to you again is my feeling right now is that dark forces, dark energy is clutching onto anything it can get its hands on right now. So if you think of a sad or a dark thought, ooh, they're going to come and they're going to latch on. So my encouragement to you is to go through your days super aware that if you have a sad or negative thought to stop right there and go, okay, I'm having a thought right now. It's okay. Yet dark forces, dark darkness or whatever, you are not allowed to involve yourself. This is just a human process. And I'm going through this process. Stake your authenticity, stake your truth. It is not stating that I'm going to be perfect in every moment. I'm only going to think good thoughts. It's not that. It's just, who are you? Are you a part of the light? Are you a part of wanting things to be better or not? Knowing that anything evil darkness can get it, get its hands on right now, it, it is going to, it is going to even go burrow through thick skin. Uh, it's just crazy right now. And I've been working on that a lot with clients. I'm also just to report on my fourth week of no sugar, no caffeine, no alcohol. Things are going, going well. And when people ask me, well, how long are you going to do this? I'm like, well, I'm probably for the rest of my life or until the Ascension happens. But knowing that when the Ascension happens, that these products are not going to be a part of our world anymore. Uh, so yes. All right. And let me bring this into the mix. This is pretty important. All right. We just got off the podcast with Margie and Steven, and I consider these kind of hard hitting, maybe some knowledge that you didn't know before. And it was interesting with Margie specifically, like most people that have been assassinated in politics um, are usually about to disclose something that is really good or really positive. And she talked about with uh, Abe Lincoln, that not so much being the case yet with John F. Kennedy, and we didn't talk about this, but with JFK, Junior, that being the case specifically. And then I want to get down to Martin Luther King. Same thing. And this to me is like a Martin Luther King moment. Not just, especially spiritual people, God loving people, to sit back in your chair and just turn the other cheek and just, you know, oh, there's so much going on right now. I'm going to love everybody. Keeping that attitude, yet putting action to it, just like Martin Luther King did, nonviolence, hand in hand, coming together, yet also not going to stand for this anymore, not going to sit back and just watch it happen. That, that is what I'm going to be doing. Whenever I feel I need to use my voice, I'm going to use it. It's always going to be kind. It's never going to be, you. well, you need to think this and you need to do this. It's going to be peaceful and planting seeds and basically letting people know that not all of us agree with what everything, with everything that is happening in our world right now, and that we are also willing to stand up. So if you can choose to look at him and him being your guiding force, I think that would be excellent. Let me throw into that mix. This is another interesting one. Uh, Mother Teresa uh, was not as she seemed to be. <laughs> not so great. Let me put it that way. Okay. A couple of other little truth, truth bombs to throw you away or some things to think about. As, as we're going through this ascension right now, everything is turned upside down. Everything is inverted and our world <laughs> right now is crazy. When you think about conspiracy theories and things that you see and things that are happening, I had a friend send me a TikTok video of a couple finding this animal in their yard, which you, I have never seen this animal before. And this is probably like the third video I've seen of that, like creatures coming to light that we've never seen. I mean, it is, it is kooky. It's all get out. So just, so just be prepared. All right. With one of those, uh, I want to throw out to you the eye that is on our dollar bill, the all seeing eye. 
I want you to start looking around and seeing how often that is portrayed. Okay, really interesting in cartoons now, The Simpsons and Rick and Morty. It's everywhere and it has a lot of meaning. Well, and with this also saying that symbology is going to be the downfall of darkness. So the more we can start looking at this symbology and putting it into our mindset versus, oh, it's just in a cartoon. Oh, oh no, there's, there's meaning for that just to keep putting it all around us. And so we don't think about it anymore. Let's go into the upside down cross. You can find on catholic.com. There's a description of what it is too. All right. The cross of saint is an inverted Latin cross traditionally used as a Christian symbol, but in recent times also as an anti-Christian or satanic symbol. In Christianity, it is associated with the martyrdom of Peter of Apostle. When sentenced to death, Peter requested that his cross be upside down as he felt unworthy of being crucified in the same manner as Jesus. I hope I'm saying this right. The Petrine cross is also associated with papacy reflecting the Catholic belief that the Pope is the successor, Peter, as Bishop of Rome. I hope I said that right, too. Papacy. Papacy. Mm. And I'll, I'll show a picture of this, and if you're watching this on, um, on video, you will see it. Satanic Cult Awareness, a document published in 1993 and backed by the U.S. Department of Justice, Justice's National Institute of Justice, states that the upside-down cross is blasphemy of the Christian cross. In one of its pages, the document mentions the symbol represented peace in the early 1960s, but now among heavy metal and occult groups signifies the cross of Nero. It shows an upside down cross with the cross member broken downward, the defeat of Christianity. Christianity. Okay. And talking about everything being inverted. Yeah. Start, start looking for the upside down cross um, and, and just taking note of it. It has been seen on heavy metal, you know, artists for a long time. Yet I, I also want to check this out because of its, its potential badness or negativity. Why would Chelsea Clinton and Melinda Gates wear it? even if it has to do with Catholicism. Why would they wear this right now? So a lot of other figures have been seen recently with that, so to Billie Eilish, Drake, and to Lady Gaga, and I'll have some pictures on there. And, and to get down to Satanistic practices, again, we talk about a lot of dark forces being in our world right now. There is a lot, a lot of Satanism, more than you would even imagine. Once you start to explore... Oh gosh, again, the the floodgates just opened up. So I, ju I just wanted to give you this interesting, another interesting fact in um, our culture. All right, so Netflix had Halloween movie uh, called The Curse of Bridge Hollow with Marlon Wayans in it. I don't know if you saw it, but it was really interesting. The principal of the school in this kid's Halloween movie, uh, he was a Satanist. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, it played a little into the plot, but it really didn't have to be that way. This leads back to Balenciaga because now that I'm on video, I can show pictures of the controversial photo shoot. And when you start looking at other photo shoots, you will see other signs that things are not as, as delightful as they appear to be. Balenciaga is owned by the parent company, Caring, which also owns Steve McQueen and several other luxury brands. And with this, apparently, Kate Spade was going to come out and expose the darkness in the fashion industry. Then suddenly, she, quote unquote, commits suicide. Let me, let me give you this little nugget also. I just watched... Zoolander 2. You know, this is so fascinating. In this movie, Vera Wang was featured, Tommy Hilfiger, Valentino, Kate Moss, among others in the fashion industry. And the premise of this comedy, this PG-13 comedy, was to find the chosen one. And when he was sacrificed, his blood would be the fountain of youth. So Mugatu 
has all these leaders in the luxury industry into this like dark cavernous sacrificial place. They were all in robes and he had this knife and he was going to kill the chosen one. And uh, (laughs) that didn't quite happen yet. Really, uh, really, are you serious? Okay. And at one point, the young boy who was about 12 to 13, who played Derek Zoolander's son, he was probably about 12 or 13. And I had to look up what, what this is exactly. So an S and M hush ball gag, which I will pose a picture as well, was put in his mouth to keep him from talking. So instead of just a handkerchief, an S and M hush ball gag. All right. I don't know about you. I, I, I am not a prude. I'm not super conservative or anything. And if that was used in a in an adult film rated R, okay, I'm sure it would potentially have its place. <laughs> but a PG-13 movie has a kid with a sex toy in his mouth. And the premise of it is about drinking someone's blood. <laughs> Not funny. Three more things I just want to highlight, which I think are very interesting. Then we'll move to the Just Be Practice. In our Western medical world that is so, let's say, hung up on being based on statistical numbers and things being, you know, where you can just hold them and this makes sense and this makes sense. Two of the major symbols within our medical world here in the United States are two things that are <laughs> that are not based on <laughs> well uh, okay let me let me let me go into that all right so the caduceus okay that is the winged staff with two serpents intertwined around it it was carried by hermes and hermes is the olympian deity in ancient greek religion and mythology so makes sense in a way but one of the main images for Western medicine is something that's based on mythology. Then we get to the rod of Asclepius. It's also an important and symbol of medicine that has its origins in the ancient world. I look this up. This is what it says. That is a staff with a single uh, serpent coiled around it. Apparently it was held by the Greek God of medicine and healing. Okay. When you start really looking into these symbols and the occult meaning of them, you will be shocked. And a cult is, the definition of a cult is the unknown. It's also related to magic and also outside of the realm of human understanding. So the word occult isn't a negative word per se, just there's this dark occult that, yeah, that's not so great. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. Ah. Speaking of the dark occult, one of the things in the world that we live in, and once you start to explore this stuff too, it's just nuts. Uh, A dark occult practice is uh, anagram. And for example, if that's just switching letters. So for example, Santa can easily be switched to Satan. Do you know that the Santa that we perceive, the rosy cheeked cute little Santa, was created by Coca-Cola in 1931? Yeah, to help sell their product. All right, getting totally off onto another subject, but I I think this is really intriguing. Surveillance. All right, let's go. There is an article by The Insider where a journalist was to see how many cameras caught him going to work in New York City. This was done in 2019. He saw, and that doesn't mean, I mean, how many were unseen? There were 49 cameras, 49. And then through my investigation, one site selling cameras for your home says you need at least three to four. And I also know of someone who has cameras inside of their house. In July, 2020, the most surveilled city in the United States, Chicago, which has a huge crime rate right now, had the highest number of cameras, 32 thousand. Atlanta, interestingly enough, which is where I lived for a while, has a ratio of 48.93 cameras per 1,000 people. 
What is the most watched country in the world? Probably not surprised by this. China is considered the undisputed leader in CCTV surveillance with more than four times cameras. More, they have more than four times the cameras that we do in the United States. China has around 200 million cameras. But get this, though, followed by the USA's 50 million, we're second in line to Germany's 5.2 million. So I would encourage you to, when you are out and about, to start noticing the cameras that are around you. Why do there need to be so many? Um, and it's interesting, like when I, one of my favorite stores is Home Goods, which is probably related to all this. They have a surveillance camera where you can actually, uh, uh, when you're standing in line, you can look up and you see yourself and the wording underneath it is, this is for your safety. Well, why is it for my safety? Do, can I not feel safe just being in home goods? Why do I have to be surveilled and why do I have to see myself being surveilled? And probably they have multiple cameras all around the store anyway. Uh, and what about there being spyware on your phone, on your computer, on your TV, are you essentially watched all the time? What does that mean if that is true? Huh? Okay. You better be careful where you pick your nose, honeys, because someone's going to see it. <laughs> Now, I hope these nuggets were were interesting. It's always interesting for me to, again, knowing a lot of this, but coming up with the the hardcore numbers and and that sort of thing, and the different uh, fact checkers and snoops and all of that, which is always involved. Just be practice. All right, all right, I, I am going, going for our practice. I'm going to think of we're going to do uh, three tiers on this, so uh, an exercise of three, kind of like we did our last one. This one, I am going to think of three things we're going to do one at a time. And I would like for you to think of what I'm thinking of. And these items are going to be very simplistic things. And they're going to be things that you can touch and feel. So not esoteric ideas or, oh, I'm thinking of happiness right now. No, something really solid and that you can, that is very concrete. All right, so let's let's do one so you can have an example. All right. I am getting the image in my head right now. And I would like for you to once again close your eyes and connect with me. All right, and not now are you going to connect with me, but you're going to connect to my thoughts. What is going on in that little head of mine? So even though I'm saying these words, I have that image spot on in there. And I, I can do this too, because I've you know been working on this, holding attention to where I need to hold it at any moment. Okay, so take your time with this again, if you just get a color that happens to be right on the money or a texture or anything. Again, nothing right or wrong about this. This is just practicing. All right, so when you're ready, let's open your eyes on the count of three. All right, so I had an image of just a sweet little pig. Kind of like a Wilbur pig, happy, <laughs> pig can be happy, um, but just kind of pinky colored. Yeah, ha I think happy is a good description. Happy little pig. All right. See how easy this is? All right, let's go to item number two. Let me get a strong hold of it in my mind. Okay. As again, we start to walk through this, we all have these gifts we can all attach we can all connect to people deeper than we can even imagine 
Okay, so here I'm going to close my eyes. You do the same, please. Again, if an item per se isn't coming into your head, a color or a functionality. Go outside the box, go in the box, go all around the box. The count of three, let's have you come back. So one, two, three. Okay, the item that I had in my head was the porcelain god, a toilet. And I had a more modern one featured in my noggin. So maybe you got something white, maybe you got water, uh, maybe you got some sort of functionality with it as well. So I'm very curious to see what happened with you. Okay, all right, our last one. Get it in my head. Now, when you're ready, close your eyes as well. Connect to me. Okay, not only am I going to work on having this image in my mind, I'm going to put it throughout my body. So all of me encompasses this three-dimensional item. Breathe. Again, whatever you happen to get, maybe a portion of it translates or something. It's great. Okay, on the count of three, both going to open our eyes. One, two, three. All right, the image that I had in my head was that of a weeping willow. So when she because they're very feminine, encompassed all of me. She was going very gently in the breeze. And the, I don't know if you've heard the sound that weeping willows make when there is a the, an air that comes over them. It is just amazing and beautiful. All right, so I'm curious with how you did or how you felt that you did. Again, do this with your friends. Uh, just again, working on that pineal gland muscle, working on expanding yourself, working on expanding your vision. And this will come to air right after the holiday season, which I encourage you to look up um, some of our holidays. Again, you will be very surprised at some of the sinister meanings behind them, especially when you get down into Halloween and carving of pumpkins. Um, it can... <laughs> It can really throw you off, but again, just looking at all of this and going, okay, this is good knowledge for me to have, and I'm just going to go ahead and continue to be the light. Okay, this is heavy, and this is heavy, and yes, this may influence me, but I'm not going to let it influence me from this point on. Uh, any dark forces that are coming my way, no, I am good. Oh, and I did want to, I'll close this. I wanted to mention, I start, I did start writing my book again. Really interesting that one of the guests that I uh, had on the show, um, amazingly ending up that he is going to be help, helping me. So shout out to Lynn. And I keep hearing in my gut, girl, you got to get this book out fast because it's going to be needed. So I am working, not working like a dog because I'm really enjoying it, really working to get it out there. So it is kind of like my podcast as well. So teaching people how to just be, in the face of challenges, in the face of things that are shocking and want to rock your world, uh, how to do that, how to be that. And you're doing it right now by doing this practice and opening yourself up. So good for you. All right, next week. So cool of you to be here. I went from being off most social media to being on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, True Social, and you might be watching this on YouTube, Rumble, or BitChute. Or you might be listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. I'm on over 19 directories at this point. So connect, comment, subscribe, like. Oh, and my intention is to have a new episode out Wednesday of each week. Oh, Lordy, more to come.
Just be practice.